What if your phone could never be out of range from service and no matter where you were on the planet, could be the top of Mount Everest, could be the middle of Antarctica or a desert island in the middle of the Pacific, you could still text and call people. Imagine how much worse a lot of horror movies would be. Imagine how short Castaway would have been. And imagine how much more creative screenwriters would have to get in that world because SpaceX and T-Mobile just announced a partnership that's going to make all of this possible within the next couple years. Let's begin. So if you recall, around a year ago, there were some rumors that Qualcomm was going to be working on next generation iPhone modems, and perhaps the iPhone 13 was going to be able to connect to Starlink satellites, and it was a bit of a stretch at the time, and of course, a lot of that video is now dated, but the fundamental thesis of it actually has aged pretty well, because now, after tonight's announcement, it means that this iPhone 13, theoretically, will be able to connect to the Starlink network without any additional hardware, at least on my end. So so the new technology announced at this event was basically the version 2 Starlink satellites, which SpaceX has been talking about for a while now. These satellites are going to have laser sat communication technology, which means that they won't have to bounce data back to ground stations like today's Starlink satellites do, which means in the future, Starlink customers will get faster speeds through those satellites, as well as lower ping. In fact, eventually lower ping than what you currently get with land-based internet because light can travel faster in a vacuum than it can through undersea cables. So we were already excited for these V2 satellites, but now through a partnership with T-Mobile's existing mid-band, Starlink on these V2 satellites is going to emit frequencies that our current day phones can already pick up. So I'm still seeing some debate online as to what exactly is compatible with this band, but I'm just going to lead a little bit on the safer side and assume that if you have a 5G phone, whether it's Android or iOS, and you're on the T-Mobile network for no additional charge, starting next year you'll be able to get service in places that are far away from cell towers and most of these places that Starlink is going to be expanding to are not places that eventually will get 5g towers they just don't make sense for a lot of sail companies to route new cables because they're desolate places or places with not that many people but that doesn't mean that there aren't people there and where this is absolutely going to be a game changer is emergency services because okay this wavelength is going to be on the v2 satellites but it's it's still going to be two to four megabits per second on every cell and these cells that the satellites will be covering on the ground are quite large which means that at least for the first couple years you'll not be able to watch YouTube videos or live stream over Starlink from your phone but you will be able to send a text message tell someone where you are likely be able to send your latitude and longitude and even have a voice call probably not a video call at least for now but at the event they said they do plan on expanding it as time goes on so maybe in another five years this technology will increase the speeds to where you'll actually be able to watch videos over Starlink even if you're away from a cell tower and all it requires is a somewhat modern day smartphone so yes this phone could do it and a line of sight to the sky so it probably won't work if you're in a cave and it may not work great if you're indoors but in these emergency situations where you know your car breaks down or you twist your ankle on a hike in the woods and your phone has battery but you're not near a cell tower this is where it absolutely will save lives and people will be able to call for help notify their loved ones that they're in a bad situation and essentially there will be nowhere on earth that you won't have signal in fact Elon at this event described the fact that because it's asymmetrical data transfer as in you're not watching a YouTube video you're not playing an online game it doesn't even really matter if the satellites have a complete full constellation yet so even if there's just a small chain of satellites in the sky as soon as your phone picks up that signal even if it is very brief when when it's passing over by, your phone will pick it up, send the text message, and notify someone that you're in trouble. So until the V2 constellation is complete, which may take a couple years, you probably won't be able to maintain a video call or again, do any kind of high bandwidth data usage, but texting is a very crucial part of all of our daily lives already, and being able to text people and let them know, hey, I'm in trouble, or I need your help, or you please need to send someone out into this region, that's going to absolutely change the way we use our phone. 
phones. And I can totally relate to that because I'm house sitting for my grandparents right now and watching over their property. And thank God there's Wi-Fi here, but there's actually no cell service. I don't get T-Mobile here. And I've had friends and family that come here with Verizon and AT&T and it's basically just a dead zone. So if the Wi-Fi went out, then I wouldn't be able to communicate with anybody. But assuming I had a T-Mobile plan in the future, which I'm currently on Mint Mobile, so they're using the T-Mobile network. There might be a little partnership that comes out of that someday. I would be able to text and call people using the satellites flying over my head right now as long as I'm outside, which is pretty game-changing tech. And I think the real mind blower is that it's not going to require new phones. You know, for a long time, there were a lot of rumors that Tesla is going to make a phone or the iPhone 14 is going to support satellite communications. And a lot of people thought that's why the Far Out event is showing stars and everything, because newer iPhones are going to have this capability. But no, it's pretty much all modern day phones are going to be able to use this wavelength and communicate with people in emergency situations. But the weird thing about this is the partnership implies that T-Mobile is basically going to have sole ownership over this Starlink collaboration, which means that if you're on Verizon or AT&T, you may never get the ability to use the most popular and by far the most common low Earth orbit satellite network, which is Starlink. And I could easily see Starlink getting in trouble for that for monopolistic practices. And it definitely feels weird that in the future that might be an upsell on a lot of people's phone plans. Like this guy was in the middle of the woods and he couldn't text someone that he needed help. He couldn't get someone to rescue him because he didn't get the right Magenta Max plan or he was on Verizon. Therefore, he wasn't able to save himself. That already starts to feel a bit sketchy, even more so than Apple trying to tell people that, hey, the Apple Watch can save your life because of its heart tracking capabilities. It feels a little bit weird to market that, but we'll see how this rollout goes. It's going to be dependent on when SpaceX can get Starship up and running, which they're expecting to begin next year. Then they'll start launching V2 satellites. And if Starship gets delayed, Elon said they have a backup plan to use miniaturized V2 satellites on Falcon 9 rockets, which have been in operation for years. All of our current Starlink satellites were brought up by the Falcon 9 rocket, which has proven to be reliable and very safe. It's brought astronauts to the International Space Station many times. So this tech is real, it is coming, and I do think it's game changing. It's far more important than 5G will ever be. 5G is just getting excited about faster speeds, whereas this Starlink collaboration with T-Mobile is literally about saving people's lives and getting rid of dead zones entirely. So what do you guys think of this collaboration? Are you pumped? Are you excited? Is that a pretty freaking cool new feature that you didn't know your iPhone had in the first place? All that good stuff. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I'll see you all in the next one.